Welcome to another episode of Tech Done Different. As always, I'm your host, Ted Harrington. And with me here today is our special guest, Rashid Ahmed, the CISO of Velocity Group USA. Rashid, thanks for being on the show, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to have you tell us a very rare story, which is a success story. You know, all too often when we, we think about security stories, they are cautionary tales. And that makes sense that there's, uh, that's not a bad thing. It's just, there's more of them. It's more vivid to say like, Hey, when this thing failed, here's what we learned from that. Security is pretty hard to have success stories because it's usually like, we didn't get hacked. And does that mean it's because we did a good job or what? But you have a really interesting success story to share with us that has to do with ransomware. So um, can you paint the picture and start walking me through it? And I'm going to ask you questions as we go. Sure. Sure. So um let me, uh, so basically uh, this started January of 2020, right before COVID um, hit. So basically I was asked to come in uh, to this organization out here in New York um, to take a look um, at their systems. Um, they were just acquired by another company and, um, you know, one of the owners uh, left and, you know, bad bad business relationships between um you know the organization and vendors and a whole bunch of stuff so basically um i was i, I was i was asked to come in um because uh they had to basically move out of the building it was critical for them to move out of the building um so they wanted me to take a look at the security take a look at their infrastructure take a look at what they had and uh you know see if i can help them uh get this accomplished um so one of my buddies um actually asked me to to you know help them out you know they were they really needed help to get this thing going and he was a little worried so i'm like okay you know what i'll, I'll go and take a look so when i got there um, you know, I looked around, I looked at their network room, I looked at, you know, people processes, you know, see what they have. Cause I don't, you know, I don't know nothing. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. I'm going in blind, completely blind. I don't know anybody. Nobody knows me. You know, I'm getting the, I'm getting the, the, that, the evil eye, you know, when I'm walking through the halls because like, who's this dude, they you think know, this guy's going to make my life harder or take my job or recommend I get fired or, yeah. Oh dude, you have no idea <laughs> what I was up against. Yeah. And all of, by the way, all of the above all of the above what you just mentioned um so you know i'm going around i'm looking at everything and um you know what i see was um you know i started sweating you know i had beads coming down i'm like okay uh you know this is going to be challenging uh just because you know um we have a company that's 50 years old um that have a, that has people from you know all age groups um that don't understand technology and really don't understand security at, at all um, you know, passwords were just, you know, hey, it's A, B, C, D, you know, hey, it's one, two, three. And everybody had stickies on their, you know, on their, on their, on their monitors with the, all the passwords and everything. So I'm just walking around just under, trying to understand, you know, what, what I'm getting myself into here. And, uh, and basically I knew right away that, you know, this is going to be some, some work. Um, so basically the, the biggest, the biggest uh, driver here was they had to move out of that building ASAP um, because the owners, they, they, had to, they had to evacuate the building for whatever reasons. And that was top priority. Um, I asked them what they had, how, how they were planning on doing it. Um, and they were talking about, you know, backups. Um, they were doing backups uh, to an external hard drive, but they couldn't get the backups working because they had files that were that were that was probably about I don't know 100 gigabytes or 200 gigabytes worth of data, and the files were nested. When I mean nested, I mean nested. When if you if you started a copy, um, um, it, it was definitely gonna fail. It was guaranteed to fail. And I don't care which software utility you were using, Linux, Windows, Max. I don't care. It was not happening. This thing was not gonna uh, copy everything. You would you would get you would get a lot of it, but it was it wasn't copying everything. Mm -hmm. So so one of the questions was, hey, why don't we just shut down the machine and just you know move it across? Now the challenge there was, the IT guy there um, basically said that if that server and this is the production server, this is their ERP system, their CRM. This is everything, by the way. Um, they basically, so their, their IT guy basically said that if, if this 
system shuts down, it, it most likely will not come back up. And he, he basically brought a little bit of fear into the organization uh, because when, you know, talking to people, their concern was that, you know, if we shut down this machine, it'll, it won't come back up. Um, and we can't make any backups. Um, we can't do any type of you know, regular backups, like you know, file, uh, copy, uh, file copy type backups. It was just not possible. So they were sort of locking themselves into a situation where they're fully dependent on a single point of failure without any sort of backup capability. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, so now the, the challenge was we had to get out of there. Um, we had to move this stuff over. Oh, and by the way, their firewalls were, you know, out of the box, or, you know, uh, Best Buy type regular firewall. There was, you know, there was no, 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 no real type of uh, uh, equipment there. It was just off the shelf, regular stuff. All ports are opened here. You know, everybody's remote desktoping into the internal network openly. Like it's, it was chaotic. It's, it, it was chaotic. Thank God I can say it was chaotic. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, so basically, and and this is where I now this is where I had the opportunity to sit down with the owner and uh, you know this is important um, because the owner of this of this organization he 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 called himself an IT guy mm. and and truth be told you know I love the guy now you know he's he's awesome he's a great guy I love him to death I'll give him my left arm no problem but you know he understood it at a very very extreme high level but when it came down to it, it the, the technical aspect he didn't really understand hmm. and understandable you know he's a business owner he you know i completely get it you know um, probably shouldn't need to know those things i mean that's that's the point of leadership you surround yourself with the experts in all the domains and then you just point the ship in the right direction exactly exactly um, so I, 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 I sat there, I understood exactly what I understood what was going on, you know, so I sat him down, I said, Hey, listen, um, you know, this is the, the truth of, this is the truth of matter. Uh, uh, you know, and the, the first thing I started off with was uh, there's no FUD here. I'm not trying to create any type of fear, no uncertainty, no doubt. Um, I am just going to give you options, what, what your available options are. And you can tell me whichever way you want to go and you know, we'll take it from there. Mm -hmm. um, and I explained to him the situation and I also explained to him, it's really nobody's fault the way things are going, you know, nobody was trained, you know, there was no leadership, you know, the whole, I'm sure your, your, your listeners here have heard this a gazillion times and I don't want to bore them to that, but it's, it's the classic, you know? Mm -hmm. um, um, so, so basically feeling this you know, pain themselves right now as yeah. they're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're cringing right now. Right. right. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so uh, your typical story here. Um, so I sat him down, you know, hey, this is your options. Um, and I and one of the things I, I actually you know, talked to him about was, um, you know, talking about talking about the moving process, what opportunities we had. Um, and one of the opportunities that we had at the time was if we were going to move to a new environment, let's get real equipment, live real firewalls that, you know, that have a purpose that can be start building a fabric off of and, you know, have some sort of security. You know, we can't, you know, I couldn't build everything overnight. I wish I could have just snapped my finger, had a SIM here, you know, IDP here, like the whole beautiful, I wish, but, you know, reality, obviously that's not going to happen because they were on a tight budget in the whole nine. So, um, so I sat down, talked to him. Hey, we need at least let's start with this. Um, you know, we need to get circuits into this new place, wherever this new place is. Let's start talking about, um, you know, uh, building out, you know, IPs. You know, let's start talking about hardware. You know, what we're going to do. Oh, and let's get all new computers because I, you know, it's safe. I do not want to go in with the same set of equipment and just put it onto this brand new environment. Uh, you know, I want to try to have at least new PCs, uh, new servers, um, if we can. Um, and at this point, actually, I was trying to talk to him about the cloud. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, um, you know, the idea was to try to take the servers and move them over here. But remember, they had the fear in their mind mm -hmm. from the old tech uh, IT guys, basically think, think, you know, basically in their mind, they had, they had a stuck um thinking that if the machine if that service shuts right. down it's gonna basically die you know um and i and i wasn't worried about that because he was shutting down the machines he was rebooting them and there was a whole process going on and i i, I wasn't afraid of that right. uh, however however now this is the dilemma that i was stuck in 
if for whatever reason, the day of moving the server over, the stupid thing actually died, then he could have turned around and said, oh, I was right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and now and now I'm in a pickle. So I needed to uh, hedge myself against that. And the only way I could have hedged against myself that was taking their system, creating a, a, a bit to bit copy deduplication and moving it into the cloud. Um, and particular in, particularly in this case, it was Azure and it's not a plug. It's only because um, the environment that they were currently in was Microsoft. So it just makes sense to move them over to a Microsoft type uh, environment. Uh, integration would have been easy. You know, a whole bunch of things uh, would have been just a lot more simpler. You know, um, I didn't want to, you know, put it in Amazon and start building stuff. And then the, the integration between Microsoft, I, I didn't want to deal with it. Plus time was ticking. I had literally two weeks to no, two, uh, two and a half weeks to figure all this out because the third week we were moving or something like that. Um, I only had like a month, a month's worth of time basically all together. Um, so you so, basically came into a situation with a, an IT problem slash kind of physical inventory problem combined with a leadership deficiency when it came to understanding the IT problem. You haven't even mentioned security yet, by the oh, way. Oh, <laughs> and oh. so you're trying to solve the IT problem with an IT solution and it delivers a security benefit inherently. Exactly, exactly. Tell me that part of the story. Um, so um, the, the security part, I'm sorry, the, the security part, the, the firewall aspect, which part were you uh, mentioning? Well, I, I, wanna, I wanna hear about the ransomware. I wanna get to that. Oh, you wanna get to the ransomware. Yes. Okay, so, so basically the, the point I was trying to make was I'm going in here blind, everything. There's a whole bunch of problems, right? I'm going in here blind. Um, and they have a bunch of uh, technical folks that are on board um, and I can use them to help with whatever I need to get done, right? So I have, uh, you know, a guy for the cloud, I have a guy for on-prem and I have a few other guys that I'm, you know, working with. Uh, by the way, there's no processes, there's nothing here. I'm just trying to get things going, you know, it's basically off the shelf, just trying to get things done. Um, so basically, we basically we move over. Um, you know, we move everything over, everything's successful, um, everything's beautiful. Um, and during the middle of this entire thing, um, as we're going, uh, putting this together, um, I find out uh, maybe towards the end uh, when we move in um, that, uh, I think I, I wanna say it was about three weeks in, I, I get a call uh, one morning saying that uh, our, our machines aren't, uh, this application isn't starting up. Um, this is, by the way, this is 6 a.m. now. This is a 6 a.m. call. Um, you know, application is starting up. And generally, this application does have problems. And generally, we need to just restart the server and life is peachy. I'm like, okay, you know what? Just restart it. Whatever. Have a nice life. Yeah. I'm off. Come, call me back. Um, sorry. I tried restarting it. It's still not happening. I'm like, what the hell? Then I'm thinking DNS issues because we were having some DNS issues. I'm like, I will check the DNS. DNS, no, that's fine. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, everything's great. Uh, there's nothing wrong. So I'm like, all right, let me, let me, and I'm driving to work, by the way, 6 a.m. driving to, to driving to the office. So I have this guy on the phone, this other tech on the phone, and he's, I'm like, do me a favor. Can you see what's, just browse onto the C drive, see what's going on? And I hear him go, uh-oh. And it's, it's a silent. He's Not like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and, and I, I tell you, my, my, my heart literally sank to my stomach when he said, uh-oh. I'm like, oh, okay, what happened? He goes, there's a file here and it says something here. And right there, instantly, instantly, I knew what was going on. And, and I'm like, okay, um, let's see, let's see, let's see how bad this is. Um, I'm like, can you please start browsing the drive and start taking, taking a look at this um, and, and see what's going on so he's going through the drives he's like oh yep yep it's all encrypted encrypted everything all the files the the folder that that basically uh, is the erp system and the crm system and everything it's basically a folder it's all encrypted it's all it's all done for um and this is 6 a.m by the way um so we basically Basically, I'm driving to the office. I get to the office. I'm like, you know what? Let me jump in. Let me take a look and let me see what's going on. Um, by the time I get to the office, where I take a look, yep, sure enough, it's it's encrypted. Um, I, 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 we can't do anything. It's basically locked out. Um, so, do you have any sort of notification from the 
whoever the perpetrator for this? How did you? So, yeah, you know, basically it was a, a message saying that, um, you know, contact us, you know, here's your code. They were, they were nice enough to give us a, a special code. You know, they were very generous customer service, gave us right? customer service. Yeah. They gave us a, a unique code that would identify us and that would basically, you know, on their back end, give them, you know, tell us, Hey, this is their files and whatnot. Um, but, um, you know, that's where we were at the time. Um, so, you know, just basically got everybody on the team, you know, whichever we had one, two, three, they had about three, two or three guys uh, on the call. Um, again, level one guys, you know, very basic guys, just trying to understand and, and, and basically assess the situation. We know it's a ransom, ransomware. Um, they had old backups, um, but those backups obviously weren't functioning on prem. Um, but before, as we moved them, as we moved into the cloud, and this was part of the story I wanted to actually get to, this was the, uh, the saving grace of the story is, um, we had talked about with leadership about instead of doing backups every month or every week, I asked, let's do that every day. It cost a little bit more money, but, um, it was, uh, absolutely worth it at the end. Um, so basically what we did was we looked at our infrastructure. We looked at everything. Yes, it's encrypted. Um, uh, we try to look, go through the log files um, and try to see, you know, what happened, how they got in, what was going on. And uh, I don't know if you want to make this a long story short, but uh, basically um, they, got, get, get, they came through the Internet from an open RDP session and um, the credentials were available online. Um, that's how basically that's how they basically were able to get in. Um, and then once they got in, obviously it was easy. It was cake. They were able to install everything and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the crazy thing about this is, um, when I, when I first came in, we tried to change the passwords and this is another, another, uh, trap, uh, uh I guess I was, uh, I, I, I was in, um, um, I couldn't change the passwords. We couldn't change the passwords because, um, a lot of the service accounts, they were all dependent on each other. They use, instead of creating a service account for a particular service, they would use their own passwords and they never change their passwords and you know that whole that whole spiel so uh basically they were stuck now they were at a point where they had to change their passwords there's nothing that we couldn't do because it was out in in, in the open so we had to go back to all the application get everybody on the team we had to make sure we, we changed all the passwords and the biggest hole was actually was uh port uh 3389 was open on the firewall and allowing uh access that was actually initially closed when this first when this was set up, but during the time within two three weeks, remember this this business has no processes, it's nothing. People just do things at a whim. The the, the owners say something, the the people just respond because they're the owners, and it gets done. Um, there's no process, so they inadvertently opened up um, um, everything, you know, basically everything inside to this particular server. And, you know, that's how they basically got in at the end of the day. Um, you know, we found out, you know, went through logs, looked at the firewall, looked at all the information and basically start, you know, locked everything up. Um, once we locked everything up, you know, we started obviously getting building. Actually, that was a perfect. Um, well, I don't want to say it was perfect, but, it, it, you know, it was scary. Thank God we had backups. You know, I thought we were going to have a different, I thought we, I thought we were going to have a different conversation with these guys. And basically uh, I was going to tell them, Hey, you got to shut down. I really, I really thought we would be saying that, but um, you know, these, these, these guys, they were opportunistic. Uh, they were only looking for an opportunity. Had they stuck around for a couple of weeks more, a couple of days more, they could have actually ventured out and did a lot more damage, but knock on wood, it didn't it didn't go there um you know at that point we we got actually got really lucky um because they only stopped there they had they had the ability to do a lot more damage but um i guess uh somebody was on my side that night or, or that day or whatever but yeah but that's basically what happened so because of this process that you put in place to back everything up which was to solve that it problem when everything was now encrypted because of ransomware uh, I don't know if we explicitly stated, but this was definitely an attack. An attacker oh. was asking you for to pay money to um, decrypt your files. Yes. You were able to go to that Azure instance and basically recreate your entire environment without having to pay the ransom. And you were backup operating very quickly, I believe, right? Well, like within hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were, once once we figured out, we were literally, the, the company was processing data, customer transaction within 
four hours flat, we were up and running, like as a network, the, like as if nothing had, had ever happened. That's, yeah. that's the state we got back. Literally the night before, we were back up the night before, midnight before. We were, and remember this, remember this tech happened at 6 a.m. So 6 a.m. is when they were just starting. Right. So I'm glad whatever happened, happened between midnight and 6 a.m. because we had the backups from midnight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And when you think about, by comparison, um, even when organizations are able to recover from a ransomware attack, whether they pay the ransom or not, but often it takes weeks, months, sometimes longer than that. And what do you think was the linchpin to why you were able to recover so quickly? It was, it was seriously um, at the end, I, I, you know, and I, and I thought back about this um, and it was because of the, because it was simple, the, simply fa the simple fact that there was no backup, there was no redundancy, they had nothing in place and we had to move to a new, a new physical environment, and we had these fear. You know, we had this fear of the system going down. Um, just you know, just sitting down and thinking, understanding the risks. I think at the end of the day, that's what it came down to: is understand your risk. I I truly understood what the risks were at that point in time, and what we had to get done in a short period of time based on this business owner's requirements. And, you know, just making sure I can go back at any moment in time, I think was at, the, at my absolute saving grace. Because um, remember, when we moved, we were taking snapshots, we were taking multiple backups, we were doing a bunch of things that we weren't normally doing. Um, well, well, not we, but they were normal, what they weren't normally doing, you know, after I came, we, we changed some process around. Um, and we you know we're still developing, but um, that was literally, if we, if we would have taken a week backup, um, we would have been, okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world to re-enter data back, you know, four days a week, maybe it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. We would have been still been fun functional. The, the, the organization was still, would have still been in business. It would have just sucked, you know, yeah. entering all that data in, right. but, you know, just a few dollars more. I was able to create a nightly backup and that few dollars basically saved the, the entire organization. Um, and, 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 and a week's and technically if let's just say if they said, yeah, well, we'll, we'll do a weekly backup. It saved them five days worth of, you know, whatever time and energy that would have taken resource wise, you know, um, that was all saved just because we had backups. So that's an interesting detail to this where people listening to this can, you know, we can all like, as they say, sort of Monday morning quarterback, like review the game film of what happened over the weekend and say, what, what could we have done better? And, and people might hear that story and say, wow, that does make total sense to me to spend a few more dollars to get the daily backup. Or they might say, you know what, I'm willing to risk the five days of manual data entry to be more on like a weekly cadence, but at least now they're making that cost benefit analysis rather than just saying, oh, well, this costs more dollars without realizing that it also could cost uh, more person hours, which could be exponentially more expensive. And, and remember, they were inputting data manually. Now, imagine all the, day, all the errors along the way too. We haven't right. put that cost, that factor in as well. So there's a whole bunch of ifs that we could put in place, but with the nightly backup, those ifs, we don't technically don't have to worry about. Yeah. You're yeah. good, we, we were good. Um, uh, yeah, it's, I, I think that the, the nightly thing really saved us. Um, and, and like I said, even if you had the weekly, it would have been good. But I think just to be honest with you, it would have been way too much. I think it would have been even that even that data manual data entry, I think would have been way too much. I don't think it's worth it for that for that cost right, for that right. little bit more cost personally. So I was going to ask you about things that you learned from the story. It sounds like one that is coming through loud and clear is that cost benefit analysis. Um, it sounds like you did definitely did some things right. What were the things that you learned that maybe you would do better next time? So someone's listening to this story. They're like, wow, Rashid really uh, saved the day here with this. But there are still things you would have improved upon. What might those things be? Oh, yeah. Um, I like, okay, so let's, let's, just, let's just go back a little bit. Uh, maybe if I would have spent a little bit more time and said, hey, listen, um, maybe we need to spend more time on these processes, um, you know, because 
um, um, I understand, um, you know, the gaps, the, the knowledge gaps between all these IT folks. Um, you know, I could have done that maybe a little bit better. Um, you know, maybe I could have implemented a, a better, um, I could have thrown a piece of software in that could have helped me. I mean, there's a whole bunch of what ifs that I can go back and think about. But then, you know, I think about, you know, when I really sit down and I think about it, I'm like, okay, you know what? I did have some challenges that I was faced up against. Uh, obviously um so i could have probably done this a little bit better maybe if i spent a little bit more time doing this maybe a little bit more time this maybe i would have um received an alert prior to the the the, the, the actual ransomware attack you know um you, you know you sit down and you think about these things you know um I, what if i would have invested a time in a sim you know would that would have been better who, who knows but uh yeah i i i think maybe the, the maybe if i would have i think spent maybe just a little bit more time in the processes i think maybe i would have been in a better place but yeah i i i think either that entire process i would have said um i think that would be the biggest takeaway on my end oh, that's awesome well this is definitely a, a really cool story i'm glad we got to feature you and feature this story here on the show um, as we come up to the end of our time here is there any parting wisdom that you want to share with anyone that you learned from this particular experience? Yes, um, uh, I, I'd like to say, um, I, I guess we're all faced with uh, challenges. I think um, just talking out uh, with leadership and just having them understand and just have them see your perspective um i think is absolute key to just dialogue a uh, dialogue 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 it's absolute key it's the driver and everything it's 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 the it's the it's the decision be between yes and no and for, as a security guy you want that yes you want to you know exude that that confidence hey you know this is serious stuff you know we we need to we need to do this and you know they just you know they just turn around and listen so i think i think dialogue uh, I, at the end of the day i think is very important I love it. I love it. What a powerful idea. Well, uh, Rashid, thank you so much for spending some time with us here together today. You've, you've been great. I love the story. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for everybody listening, if you want to learn more about Rashid or about the podcast itself, just go to tedharrington.com backslash podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.